opportunity that you have given unto us. For it's not of our mind or our power, but because of your grace and your love, Lord. Right now, Lord, we want to ask forgiveness of our sins. For you have said in your word that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, Lord. Right now, Lord, your servant is about to speak. We are asking you, Lord, that as he will be increasing, Lord, they let you increase, Lord. And hide him behind your cross, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let the Church of God say Amen. Amen. I I would like to greet the church in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, before I start, I want to say that I am hoping that I'm going to stand behind the pulpit for the duration of the sermon because of obvious reasons. Um, uh, but now if the Spirit of God takes me elsewhere, my plea is that to those who are taking videos, be kind enough to start from me up. Not down. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Yes. Um, our text of consideration this evening will come from the book of Daniel, chapter 1. For this discourse, I'm interested in verse 2. In verse 3, in fact, and verse 4. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, of the king's seed, and of the princes, the children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and to whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. May the good Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, allow me to not depreciate as you are about to appreciate. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The book of the book of Daniel uh, had a problem in the Old Testament. The Eastern Jewish scholars don't just place books haphazardly, but the Eastern Hebrew scholars place books according to their themes. In other words, the laws will be placed separately, the writings will be placed separately, and the prophets will be placed separately. The book of Daniel was not placed appropriately with the book of the prophets because the Eastern scholars believed that a prophet is someone who speaks on behalf of God. In other words, a prophet is someone who declares a thus says the Lord. But when you look at the book of Daniel, it does not speak of thus saith the Lord, but Daniel predicts the future. And therefore, because Daniel predicts the future, they had a dilemma because they are not used to Spirit is Galilee. They are not used to someone who predicts the future, but they are used to someone who speaks a thus says the Lord. And therefore, to the western sides, a prophet is not someone who speaks a thus says the Lord. It is a person who predicts the future. 
And therefore, in the Eastern prophets or the Eastern scholars, they then misappropriated the book of Daniel to the writings, not because of their knowledge, but because of the lack of knowledge. Let me say to the church, there are some of you who love Stasa, not because you love Stasa, but because in your local church, there is no place to put you. Because in your local church, they don't understand the kind of person you are. And therefore, they relegate you to the bench where you die spiritually. The gatekeepers at the local church will not allow you to sing because the hair is not what they think it should be. And therefore, when you come to Stasa, this is the only place where you are comfortable. The gatekeepers in the time of Jesus, the Bible says they brought a man that was sick on a stretcher. They wanted to put him inside the door, but the door was closed. But let me say to you, when Jesus wants to reach you, the door is not the only place that he can open. The Bible says when they could not go through the door, Jesus says, open the roof. And I'm here to tell you that the local church is the door, but Stasa is the roof. And God says, I am opening the roof so that you have a place to fit in. There is no place. There is no way that Jesus cannot reach you when he wants you. He does not care about protocol. He does not care about church manual. Let me say to you, uh, we are Adventists, but Jesus is not an Adventist. And therefore, Jesus is beyond your protocols. But just in case, Jesus is not an Adventist, but he's the God of Adventists. And the Bible, and, and, and history says that later on, the Western scholars then decided to put the book of Daniel at its appropriate place. Now, when the book of Daniel was placed at its appropriate place, the other problem began. How do we interpret the book of Daniel? How do we understand the contents of the book of Daniel? And then Pastor Kumeni talked about a few ideas. And then they came preterists. The preterists then said that no, everything that is inside the book of Daniel has already been fulfilled in the past. Now those ones were championed by Jesuits. And the reason why Jesuits did that was so that they can preserve the development, the growth, and the dignity of the Catholic Church. Let me say to you, some of you, will intentionally lie and put others down while you preserve your dignity, your development, your growth as a church elder. You will decide to use someone else as a step ladder so that you look good. That's what they did. Now, the idealist then said, no, actually, uh, everything that is written in the book of Daniel uh, it did not really happen. It was just ideas. There is no historicity in it. In other words, the book of Daniel are just ideas, and therefore the Bible is just full of feebles to try and encourage Christians so that they can walk at a certain moral pace. That's why some of you, when you don't go write exams on the Sabbath, they look at you as though you are funny. Some of you, as intelligent as you are, people believe that how can an intelligent, how can an accountant, how can a doctor believe in a book that does not make sense? How is it that you believe in a God that you have not seen? How is it that you believe a God that your forefathers said he's coming? You still are saying he's coming. Your children will say he's coming. You have never seen him. You will never see him. And yet you still believe in him. Let me say to you, the reason why we believe in this God is because in 2022, some of us were crushed. In 2022, some of us lost our jobs. In 2022, some of us lost our relationships. In 2022, some of us lost things that meant very 
that meant a lot to us. But now we are here not because of our own intelligence, but we are here because there's a hand that drives us, a hand that is unseen. And therefore, Paul says, Peter says, we did not follow feebles, we did not follow cunning devices, but we follow a Jesus that exists. We follow a God who has brought us here. I am saying to you, the Bible says that when uh, Moses, when sorry, when Samuel uh, reached a place, he took a stone and he put it between Shan and Mizpah, and he called it Ebenezer, because the Lord has led us this far. And I'm saying to us who are here, it's Tassa 22, we don't call it Shan and Mizpah. We will take a stone and put it between some pair and we'll put it between Motherwell, and we are going to say, Ebenezer, we are here because of God's grace. Amen. And therefore, we have not followed feebles, but we are following a Jesus, though we have not seen him, but we know him. Though he has not shown us his face, but his hand has led us. That's why Ellen White will then says, we have nothing to fear for the future, except as we forget how God has led us in the past. Now, those are the two ideas. After that, then there's the historicity part that I want, don't want to talk about. Then I want to get to the book. The Bible says that in Daniel chapter 1, in the third year of the reign of Joachim, came Nebuchadnezzar, and he besieged it. And after besieging it, then the Bible says, in verse 3, then the king commands the chief of the eunuchs to take a certain people. But let follow me. This is where I want to take you. They get to Jerusalem. They take everyone. And the Bible says, as they were reaching Babylon, then Psalms 137 will say, by the rivers, of Babylon. Yes. There we sat and we wept. When we remembered where we came from, let me say to us, some of your boyfriends are not going to value you until you leave. Some of your girlfriends are not going to see your value while you are still there. The Bible says we were at the rivers of Babylon there when we remembered and they say our captors asked us to sing the songs of Zion. Which are those songs? When the children of Israel left Egypt going to Canaan, the Bible says Mfundisi, Miriam had a song and she started singing the song of victory. They were saying, now when you are approaching Babylon, sing the same song that you sang there. Not only that, when the sea was parted and the uh, Egyptians were inside the water, they sang a song. The, Egypt, the, the Babylonians were saying, sing the same song that you sang there. Not only that, when they had a wall, they started singing and the walls came crumbling down. They said, the same song, sing it now. Amen. Not only that, as they were traveling and the Ark of the Covenant was taken by David back, they started singing. Now they were saying, now when you sing, li listen, listen to what they're saying. They are say not saying sing because of you. They are saying sing for us the same victories that you were singing for others. Oh. When you were in victory, you were singing for yourselves, but now don't sing for yourselves. We have heard of your songs, but sing for us. Mandela once said, if the ANC does what the apartheid government did, do to them what we did to the apartheid government. When, when we don't listen to God, the same victories that he granted us will be the same victories he will allow us to look when our enemies are enjoying. And as they are enjoying, they are going to mock us and say, where is that God? But listen to what the Bible says. After they have cried, the God of heaven, who is compassionate, he says to them, if I will forget Jerusalem, let my tongue be silent. And God says, after you have done that, after you have brought problems to yourself, if I will forget you, hey. let, my right hand. let my right hand. And then the Bible says, as they were entering. Now listen, all of them entered, right? But listen to the key word. When Nebuchadnezzar sees them coming, he starts selecting. He says, I need a certain. 
We are all slaves. But when it comes to the king's palace, not all of us go there. The Bible says he just selects a certain part. Now, when he selects a certain part, listen to what Nebuchadnezzar does. He allows them to be in his kingdom. Let me say to the church, we may be all here at Dasa, but when it comes to the earthly palace table, not all of us are going to make it because the devil selects a certain part. Let me give credit to the devil. He does not use dummies. He wants the best of the best. He wants the most beautiful ones. <laughs> those are the ones that the devil is looking for. And the Bible says that when he chose those ones. Now, when the devil chooses them, he is doing it to destroy them. But he does not know that there is a bigger hand behind him who is allowing him to choose the best out of the best because the best will have an influence. Now, let me say to you, God has three doors. And I'm closing now. He has a manual door. He has a revolving door. And he has an automatic door. The first door is the manual door. The second door is the revolving door. The third door is an automatic door. The first door deals with patience. The second door deals with timing. The third door deals with presence. Ah. Now listen to what happens at the first door. Ah. When you open the first door, it happens at times that the door is too heavy. The door cannot open. And some of us, the reason why only a certain make it is because some give up at the first door. But you cannot open the first door without the hand that the Bible says if he opens, no man can close. If he closes, no man can open. And therefore, he just wants you to persevere at that door. When the time is right, he's going to help you and that door will be opened. Now, when you open that door, there is another one called the revolving door. Now, at the mall, you usually see the revolving door. The revolving door, you just push it once. Ne? As you push it once, you turn around. It just goes by itself. It just goes by itself. But here's the problem about the revolving door. You need to have timing. Because with the revolving door, there is an exit. And therefore, if you're on your phone, you are just going to revolve. And by the time you look at yourself, you will be at the same place where you were. But now, when you have timing, when the door revolves, you will get out and you will get to the next door. Some of you are revolving in relationships because you don't know when to come out. And then, when you go back, you realize that you are where you started. You have lost more than what you have gained. The second door is timing. You must have timing. Know when to, uh, when to exit. Exit! <laughs> Then comes the third door. The third door. <laughs> and the problem is that when you have revolved a lot, your impatience is now at its peak. And then you decide, you know what? There is no other exit. And then you go back. But you see, here's the problem. And here's the nice thing about the third door. The third door, you don't have to do anything. That is the door where it just needs your presence. You just stand and the door opens itself. And then after the door, God has everything for you in store. Now the Bible says in the first door, there are some who give up. At the second door, there are some who give up. I'm saying to you, God says, just appear. When you appear in Stasa, God says, I have something for you in 2023. May God bless you all.